All right, as we said, it's good to be in the house of the Lord, and uh, we're, uh, and you know, we get in the habit of saying that every time, but we don't ever, we won't, we don't ever want to take for granted us being in God's house. You know, uh, I, I, I consider it a blessing to be able to, to be able to come to the house of the Lord. How many people is not able to be here today that would love to be in house in God's house? You know, so. Uh, we don't need to take for granted uh, being able to come to the house of the Lord, and it's it's good to be here. Anybody got a testimony today? Anything on your heart? I actually got another pie right here. Anybody got anything on your heart? While I fix my glasses. Okay, Ephesians chapter 2, and this is familiar scripture, but I'm going to tell you, uh, it's, it's great scripture. Anytime, anytime we can talk about uh, our salvation, our, our experience with the Lord, uh, uh, what God has done for us, folks, it ought to be exciting to us and it ought to be something uh, uh, that we get excited about. It's because let me tell you, nobody in this earth or on this world or in this nation, nobody ever has ever been able to do what God has done for you. Amen? Nobody has. So in Ephesians chapter 2, and I want to read the first five verses here, it says this. Everybody there? And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in times past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also... We all had our conversations in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy, for His great love wherewith He loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ by grace. You're saved. I, I, I love that. I, that's one of my favorite, well, I, and I, you hear that a lot too, one of my favorite verses. It's many of my favorite verses, if you will, one of many. But nevertheless, uh, as we look at it there and we think, uh, you know, I, I've been quickened. And what does quickened mean? I've been made alive today, amen? We're alive. We're not dead, we're alive. And as I read this this week and I was thinking about it, first of all, what's a trespass? It says, it says right here, it says, And you had the quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. What's a trespass this morning? A trespass is a, is a deviation from right. Yes? You've deviated from what's right. What's a sin? A sin is a shortcoming of the will of God. Yes? Think about it. We, we've, we've either deviated from what is right or we've, we've come short of the will of God. Yes? And, and we might say, well, well, now wait a minute. Uh, it's not fault, my fault I'm in sin or it's not my fault that, that I'm a sin, uh, 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 my nature is sin. And Yeah, you may be right because, because of Adam and Eve's sin in the garden uh, sin was pronounced. Uh, death was pronounced upon man because of sin, and and we be, we were sin. We were cre- creatures of sin then, but uh, and sin was indwelled in us. But here's the thing: uh, uh, we've been made alive. Amen. We we can't blame Adam for everything. Amen. Yeah, Adam sinned in the garden. That was years ago, though. What have I done? Amen. I've been quickened, though. And as we look at this, I, I thought about Paul and what, uh, what Paul is trying to get across to us. And Paul is showing us this morning, and he's distinctly, not just showing us, but distinctively showing us two paths. What did Jesus say? In the book of Matthew, the Bible tells us this, and I'm going to read it to you so, I don't, so that I don't mess it up. But Jesus says this, Enter ye at the straight gate. Let me back up. See, I messed it up. Enter ye in. There's a big word right there. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go thereat. 
Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Why is it so hard to find the narrow path of God? Why is it so hard for people this day and time? Why was, it, why was it so hard 20 years ago? Why was it so hard 40 years ago? Because, because Christ said it's narrow and it's hard to find. And the reason it's hard to find is that as people such as Jeff has a hard time giving up everything or giving up this or giving up that. And you've heard me say before, well, uh, I'll never give up anything really, but yet we feel like we have to give up all this just to go the path of God when we don't. You know, uh, my worst habits that I ever had left when I became a Christian. The habits I wanted to get rid of anyway, that I should have got rid of, they left when I, when I became a Christian. Did they leave all at one time? No, I had to work on it. You know, uh, uh, God saved me, amen? He washed me clean, or Je- and Je- Jesus washed me clean in the eyes of God. He said, you, ha- you have he quickened. But he didn't take all them bad habits all at once. I had to work on it. Amen. And now I believe that's why the road is so hard at times. Well, the Bible talks about the sower. When he sowed the seed, what happened? He, he sowed the seed and some fell on good ground and found, some fell on stony ground and there was other ground. And I can't remember all the grounds, but he threw them out there. And the, the, thought, the one that I remember uh, uh, the most is, is when, when, the, when the seed come up, uh, it sprang forth and and then all of a sudden, uh, because it wasn't rooted and it was up on a rock, uh, it withered away. And, and I think that's where a lot of people get this day and time is, is they, they wither away because they, 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 they grab a hold of the church or the Word, but yet it ain't rooted in them and they die. And, and, and it makes it hard. And, and that's why it's easier to walk on that wide path because there's not a whole lot of rules you got to go by. Yes, I mean, that's where we're at to this day and time. Uh, uh, that's where the world's at this day and time is walking that wide path. Christ said it's easy to, it's easy to walk it because uh, uh, there's not a whole lot of do's and don'ts. But when you get on that, if you, when you get on that straight and narrow, folks, uh, uh, they, uh, uh, God's got some regulations for us, does He not? He expects us to walk uh, according to the Word of God. But, but nevertheless, uh, as we look at uh, Ephesians here, he said, you've been made alive. And, and, and Paul shows two different, uh, two different paths there that, uh, uh, that's, that, that I walked, amen? Two paths that I've been on already. Uh, uh, there's only two. There's not a half a dozen paths. Uh, lots of people might think that there's, there's a, lot of, a lot of ways that you can get to the Lord. No, there's only one. Uh, all the other paths are that wide way that's leading to destruction. We just think it might be headed to God when it's not. Uh, there's only one path to God. That's through Jesus Christ, amen? And the only way that we can be made alive is through Jesus Christ. But let's look at the past. Path one uh, uh, that Paul is talking about is the path of do nothing. And I was on it. It's the path of do nothing. Or it, or it also can be called the path of no hope. Uh, but it's the path of do nothing. And this is a path where that I can live the way I wanted to. I can live any way I wanted to. I can do anything I wanted to. I can believe anything I wanted to. And I did. And I could have no thought. I didn't worry about what was going to happen to me after I died. I didn't worry about that. Because I was, I was doing what I wanted to, and I was believing what I wanted to, and, and I was on that path to do nothing. Here's the thing. We can go all through life and do nothing if we choose. God allows that. Amen? We can go all through life and do nothing as far as our spiritual life. God said we could do that if we chose it. Amen? But here we find the situation when we the situation we're in when we walk or we take path one. The first situation is we find that we're dead. The most vital part of the human personality is dead. Yes? Well you might say, well, what's the most vital part of our human personality? 
What's going to live after this life? Our soul. It's the most vital part. Your soul's the most vital part. You may think, oh, Aaron may be thinking, well, now, wait a minute, I'm, I'm right now, I'm the most vital part. And, and we get in that mindset. But our soul is the most vital part of our life. Yes? And when we're walking path one, the path of do nothing, the path of no hope, it's dead. It's dead. There is no life there. You with me? There is no life when we walk that path of do nothing. Our soul is dead. That's the situation we find ourselves in. Also, we find that we're enslaved. We're enslaved. We're slaves to sin. Have you ever been a slave? Have you, have you ever been a slave? Do you, know, do you know what it's like to be a slave? We, we know what uh, uh, being a slave to sin is because we've been, we've been there. I've been there. I've been a slave to sin. When I was on path one, I was a slave to sin. I don't know what it means to be a slave as we think of slaves. I don't know. I've never been a slave. I've never had to, I've never been, I, can't, I cannot explain that. But I know what it's, been, what it's like to be a slave to sin. It's hard. It's, it's hard to get out of that rut. It's hard to get out of that, off of that path that I was on. It's hard. There's, and I've, I've tried and tried and tried on my own. Anybody been there? Tried to do that. I've tried to, I, oh, I've got to do better today. I, I've got to do better. I, I, I've got to do better. And, and, and I would try to do better. And, I, and, I'd say, and I'd find myself falling right back into that path that I was, I was in. Why? Because it's the path of do nothing. And when I chose the path of do nothing, guess what? I have no help to help me. I have no one there to help me when I try to get out of that path. There's no one there. I'm alone in this world. I'm by myself. Yes? Why? Because I'm a slave to sin. It's overpowered me. It rules me. Been there? You know what I mean? Sin, rule, sin ruled us. Yes? It, it rules me. It, 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 I, 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 it, it's bigger than I am. And I don't know, I don't know what to do. You know, I, I think about times when, you know, we've, through, through the course of our lives here, we've heard of people committing suicide and, 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 and murder and, you know, uh, harming others. And I've often wondered what enslaved them the most. What, what enslaved them the most? Sin. Sin. It overtook them. Uh, when, when somebody, you know, I'm going to tell you something, folks. If you hear tomorrow that Jeff killed himself, Curtis, come pick Lisa up because it didn't happen. <laughs> I love Jeff too much. I'm telling you. I love Jeff too much. When it comes to the point where I'm to, at a point in my life that I'm thinking, that my life's not worthy, worth going on anymore, sin has completely engulfed me. Amen? Because here, God, that's, that's not God. God is a God of love. And God don't want us harming ourselves. Amen? Sin has completely engulfed me when I get to that point. And that's why when we walk that path one, we get enslaved. We find ourselves chained, chained to our sin. We, we, we can't get away from it. We can't break loose from it. I, I, I love fooling with honeybees. But when I tell you, when it comes time to gather honey, I have it all over me. I'm covered up in it. And you know what? I found out the best thing to do is not get honey on you because let me tell you, them bees will follow you all the way in the house. I found out it's the hard way. They'll follow you all the way in the house because they want it back. And I thought about that. You know, sin's the same way. It will, it will stick to you. It'll get to place. And then what happens is when, when you go down path one and you're covered in sin, all the things of sin follow you all the way home. They do, don't they? You ever notice that? It follows you. You can't get away from it. 
And we think path one's the greatest path lots of times. We think the path of do nothing is the greatest path. I mean, I, I know. I was there. Boy, it's fun. Let me tell you something, folks. Kids, teenagers, sin is great. The Bible tells us it is. It's great for a season. And then reality hits. And that's where people get, this, that's where, that's where uh, depression comes in. That's where all these, uh, these things start coming in. It's when reality hits that sin is in our lives and we don't know how to get away from it, Andy. Yes? Yes? And that's the dangers of path one. That's what Paul's saying here. What did Paul say? He says this. He says, We're in, in times past you walked according to the course of this world. Listen. We walked according to the course of this world. You know what the world is? The world is the realm of Satan. Yes? And we walked according to the course of this world. In other words, we were walking the path that Satan has put us on and won't allow us off of. Because here's the thing. Satan is a dictator. When he's got you, he expects you to do exactly what he says. Whereas God allows you to choose. Amen? Think about that. And we'll yet... We find ourselves following the path of Satan and got ourselves convinced that it's the easiest path. Yes? Think about it. Paul, Paul says here, we walked according to the, the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the hour, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. We're slaves to sin. We're under the bondage of sin. We're blinded to the things that are coming. Another thing, another situation we're in when we walk that path is we are the objects of wrath. God hates sin, does He not? God hates sin. God will not except any sin. Sin builds a partition up between me and God. Amen? Amen? It builds a wall between me and God. God would pour His wrath out on sin and all partakers of it. That's the Bible. That's the Bible. Like Andy said this morning, that's nothing we've made up. That's the Bible. God will pour His wrath out on sin and the partakers of sin. He will. We are the objects. When we walk path one, the path of do nothing, the path of no hope, we find ourselves uh, the objects of the wrath of God. Don't stop there. Listen. We walk among the disobedient. Listen. And it's cool. We walk among the disobedient. And it's cool. It's not going against the grain. Do you realize you've got to go against the grain to be a Christian? You do. You got to get go against your own flesh to be a Christian. And it ain't easy at times. It's hard. It's tough. God never said that it's going to be a rose garden to be a Christian. And even if it had been a rose garden, roses have thorns. It can be tough. But the reason it's tough is because I make it tough on myself. Amen. Why? Because I was once a slave to sin. And because I still have that flesh, and because it's still easier to walk on that tube of six instead of that tube of two, I tend to want to walk that path. That's why it gets so hard. That's why it's hard is because I make it hard. Amen? But the path to do nothing, we find ourselves among disobedient people. We find ourselves that it find out that, it, that it's cool, that it's popular, it's the most convenient, and it don't go against the grain. But the last part of this one that I've got for you, the situation we find ourselves when that we walk the path of do nothing is that we are under Satan's dominion. This is something to think about, folks. We're under Satan's dominion. You know what that means? That Satan has absolute authority over us. 
You with me? Folks, that's scary. I mean, it just, that gives me cold chills thinking that Satan at one time had absolute authority over me. Satan, when I walked the path of no, of do nothing, of no hope, Satan had absolute authority. But see, Paul don't stop there. He don't stop with that path. He tells, tells us about, he's, and see here, here in verse 11, he says, Wherefore remember, remember that path that is you is on, what's on. He said, and you, in verse 1 there, and you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, where in times past you walk, and among, verse 3, among whom also we had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, uh, even as others. But verse 4 says, But God, who is rich in mercy, for His great love wherewith He loved us, even when we were dead, I told you a while ago, the, the road to do nothing, uh, our soul is dead, even though we, we were dead in sins, has quickened us together. He has made us alive. Folks, we're alive this morning. We need to let make sure people see it. And we're alive because of this. We chose the second path. What's the second path Paul mentioned? It's the path that Christ said was the narrow path. And few be there that find it. Few find the sec that second path, or the, actually the best path, we'll put it that way. Few find path two, that narrow path that Christ has made for us. Why do few find it? Because on this path, we've looked at where we are spiritually in our lives. Amen? This path, we've looked at our spiritual life and seen where we were. This path, we've considered where we stand in the sight of God. Let me tell you something. When we start looking uh, uh, at our spiritual lives and we start considering on where our standing is in the sight of God, we'll do something. Amen? We'll do something. I mean, at one time in my life I realized that I was a slave to Satan, that Satan had absolute authority over me, and then I started checking where I stood in the sight of God. Well, if Satan's got authority over me, I'm none of God's. And if I'm none of God's and God don't know me, then God's not going to take care of me. I'm alone in this world because Satan's definitely not going to take care of me. When I find myself alone and realize that, and I take, I take into account where I stand in the sight of God, then I'm going to try to do something about it. And I've tried that before. Remember I told you a while ago that I've tried to get out of that trail. I tried to get out of that path one on my own, and it never worked. But when I start looking at, my, at where I stand in the sight of God, and then I, I start considering life after death and my destination the next thing I did was I accepted the only way to satisfy God, the only way to get in good favor with God was go through His Son Jesus. There's the path. There's the path. There's the narrow path. There's the path that's sometimes hard to find because of all the broad ways and the easy life and, and the great things that the devil promised. That's the reason we can't see the narrow path. But when we start considering and looking at where we stand in the sight of God and how we are spiritually and at a life after death and our destination, we have to realize the only way to satisfy Him is through His Son. And we have to accept that Christ has redeemed us from the dominion of Satan. Yes? That's the only way for me to get out of the ditch is if I allow Christ to do it. Amen? Yeah. Amen? Listen. By paying my sin debt with his death, burial, and resurrection, I then realized that I'm not... Oh, here, something else. You know what a misconception of the world is today? Is that, well, if I go to church, I get in the choir, I, I sing, I sit in a pew, hey, I'm automatically grafting in. That's a lie. There is no automatic salvation, folks. It ain't automatic. It's not automatic. Don't ever think that. 
It's, it's not a, hey, God don't automatically graft us in. He don't automatically uh, load us into the, uh, to, 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 into favor of him, to his favor. It don't happen. It's not automatic. Listen, I'm not quickened automatically. I'm drawn by the Holy Spirit. So here's what was happening. When I was in a, on the path to do nothing, and I was trying, and, and you know, on the path to do nothing, it's kind of like it's got walls like this. Straight up walls. Have you ever noticed that? The walls are straight up on both sides of the path. Why? So you can't get off of it. You know, if the devil, he ain't stupid. He don't want you off the wide path. He don't want you recognizing that the only hope that you have is the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He don't want that. So he wants to keep the walls straight and high. Do you realize that the narrow path has no walls? There's no wall on the narrow path. There is no wall. It's just a path. If you want to step off of it, you can. Amen? But the devil don't want you out of the wide path. He don't want you to see Jesus. But here's what happened. When we realized that I couldn't get up that wall by myself and I realized that without God, I'm nothing. Without Jesus Christ, I can't see God. Then I realized all I had to do is ask for Christ. And guess what? He just led, he, All he has to do is lean over the wall and pick me out. All he has to do is reach over the wall and pull me out. And that's what he done, folks. That's where when Paul said, and you had the quickened from when I got off the wide path, Christ pulled me over that, that wall, that partition that separated me from God. Is that wall? That's a, there's that wall on both sides. That partition, when Christ pulled me over, my soul became alive. I was a changed man. I, 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 hey, it ain't, it ain't been the same since, has it? All of a sudden, I'm finding my situation different now. All of a sudden, I'm finding myself that I'm alive. I've been made alive by the blood of Christ. Now I'm finding that I'm a joint heir. Guess what? I'm an heir of something now. I own property. I do. I own property in heaven. I didn't buy it. I didn't, I didn't do nothing for it. But I got a deed for it. Because I'm joined ours with Christ now. Amen? I'm joined ours with Christ. Guess what? Instead of the wrath of God now, the condemnation on me now, I'm now an object of grace. Yes? And mercy. When God looks down, He don't see the sin. He don't pour the wrath. He has mercy and grace because of Jesus. See the difference? See the difference the past make? The wrath's not there no more. Now, and, and, and uh, uh, Dwayne read about it in, I think, Philippians this morning. It's talking about the, the fellowship we have with God. Now, I have fellowship with Christ. The situation I find myself now is, there's fellowship. I'm not alone in the world no more. I've got Jesus. I'm not alone. I can I, see the great thing is none of you can be with me all the time, but God can. I'm not alone. The realm of Satan and the world now means nothing. Amen. It don't scare me no more. It don't worry me no more because Satan does not have dominion over me. Amen? Because now I'm in union with Christ. I'm a fellow citizen. The Bible says it. Paul says it. I'm a fellow citizen with the saints and of the household of God. Listen, we're, if I can find it here in just a minute. Right here, verse 19, Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. I'm a fellow citizen now. And it all goes back to the point where I realized the path of do nothing was a path of no hope. 
And the only way for me to get to God was to find path two, the straight and narrow. The only way for me to get out of that path one was to ask for God's help. And that's when he sent Jesus. Amen? That's when he sent Jesus. What path are we on today? I'm on the path that's on the straight and narrow. I'm not on the path of hell and destruction and total wrath of God. I'm on the path that is of true, genuine hope where that we were the righteousness of Christ and God is satisfied with us. You know, when Paul wrote this, who was he writing to? He was writing to the, the church of Ephesians. He was writing to the Christian people. He was letting them know that, hey, you've chosen the right path. You're, you're, uh, you've been made alive and you have he quickened. You've been made alive. You've chose the right path. Just make sure you stay on it. Make sure you stay on it. Listen. I told you a while ago, being born again is not something that happens automatically. It doesn't happen when you want it to. Amen? It don't happen when you want it to. The Bible says in John chapter 6, verse 44, I believe, the only way that we can get saved is when we're drawn by the Holy Spirit. That's the only way we can get saved. Listen, I've heard people say it all my life. Well, I'll get saved when I want to. No, you won't. No, you won't. That's the lie of the devil. They, hey, he's still got you within the walls of the broad way. He's still got you thinking that everything's okay, that you can get squared up with God anytime. It's not automatic. You don't just get saved when you want to. You get saved when God draws you and you accept His Son and surrender your life to Him. Amen? The Philippian jailer asked Paul, how do I be saved? What did he say? Believe. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. My favorite verse, you're going to hear it this morning. First John 1 and 9 says what? If you confess your sin, He's faithful and just to forgive you of that sin and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Amen? What does that tell us? That tells us we've got to choose the right path. We've got to choose Christ. Look at that. The door opened on its own. The Holy Spirit walked right in. That tells us we've chose the right path. If you chose the right path, leave it open. I'm about to burn up anyway, brother. We've chose the right path. Have you chose the right path this morning? You know, I, I, I firmly believe in my heart that everybody here has chose the right path. I hope you have. But see, I can't, I can't see your hearts. I can't, I, I don't know your heart. I don't know your mind. You know, you're here today. Maybe you thought that it's just automatic. Well, it's not. You've got to be drawn. And I firmly believe when the altar call is given and the Lord's dealing with people, that's the time when they can get saved. Now, now don't get me wrong. You don't have to have an altar call. You know, I got saved at my house. Do you know how I got saved? The Holy Spirit drawed. The Holy Spirit let me know. See, here's, here's, how, here, here's how God works. Here's how the Word of God works. And I've told you this, and, 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 and you know it, but I'm going to tell you again, the Word of God's alive. It's not, it's not just a book. It's a living Word of God. Amen? And how the living Word of God works is it, it lets us know and it, it, it makes us aware of sin in our life. I mean, that's how it, see, that's how it trims. Uh, the Bible talks about the vine. And he said, I am the vine, and you are the branches. And if they're not bearing fruit, we, the, the, God prunes in them. And that's what the Word does. It prunes our lives. It, it, it lets us know when they sin in our lives, and, and it chips it away. You see, if we was never made known that sin was in our lives, we would never be convicted. That's how the Word of God works. It lets us know about sin in our lives and it convicts us through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit makes us aware of, of sin and then it gives us the option to get it right. That's what happens. That's where we're at right now. Amen? It's not automatic. The Holy Spirit touches our hearts. Pricks our hearts. Uh, when Christ, you read about the Bible, and Christ speaking to them, and, and uh, some other prophets, and the Bible would say it pricked their hearts. What happened? They were made known that they were guilty. And some of them left, 
uh, uh, it, it, the blind man. I was reading last night. The blind man, when, when the Pharisees, I think, and the, I think it was the Pharisees, or maybe it was a high priest, some one of them, came to him and said, uh, 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 who is this man that, that made you to see it? And he kept telling them, and he, he kept telling them, he said, you know what? He said, this man can't be of sin. If he was sin, he couldn't, he couldn't do this. You know, the Bible says uh, a, a house is divided against itself. One all stand. You said that this morning. He cannot stand. He said, he said uh, he, this man cannot be a devil. He cannot have sin. And what did they say to him? Who are you to tell us? See, we can't get so righteous, self-righteous, that we quit listening to the Holy Spirit drawing us. See, Paul's talking to the Christians. Let me tell you something, folks. Don't ever think that you can't get above sin. Because sin will, sin will knock your legs out from under you. Amen? It will. It will. Don't ever think that you get above sin. Because it will knock your legs out from under you. What's Paul saying? Wherefore, remember... Don't forget where you came from. Don't forget that you were once aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. Aliens. You didn't know God. You wasn't included in God. But then he made you alive. Don't ever forget. Don't ever forget, folks. We still got to walk on path, path, that narrow path. The path of genuine hope. Not the path of do nothing. A lot of times Christians get to the point where, hey, I've been saved. Now I walk that path to do nothing. I'll just sit here in the chair. What happens? What happens? We die. We die. So I want to ask everybody to stand this morning. I want to give you an opportunity to, uh, you know, I, I, I firmly believe this altar.